Thank you for understanding the switch in True Crime and Makeup Friday to True Crime and Makeup Monday. Has a better ring to it if you think about it. Anyway, um, I'm going to take my meds and then we'll get started on the case of Nanny Doss. Alright, I'll be right back guys. Hello and welcome back to True Crime and Makeup Monday. Um, this is going to be really hard for me because I have no contacts in. So I have to get like, hold the paper in front of my face as well as do makeup and this might be presenting a challenge. So we're just going to see how this goes. Nanny Doss, born Nancy Hazel, was an American serial killer responsible for the deaths of 11 people sometime in the 1920s and 1954. Doss was also referred to as the Giggling Granny, the Lonely Hearts Killer, the Black Widow, and Lady Bluebeard. Doss finally confessed to the murders in October of 1954 after her fifth husband had died in a small hospital in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um... In all, it was revealed that she had killed four husbands, two children, two of her sisters, her mother, two grandsons, and a mother-in-law. I mean, that takes, like, hitting your in-laws to a whole new level now, doesn't it? Nanny was born on November 4th, 1905 in Blue Mountain, Alabama, now part of Anniston. She was born to Louisa Lou... Any knee holder and James F. Hazel. Nanny was one of five children. She had one brother and three sisters. Both Nanny and her mother hated James, who was a controlling and abusive father and husband. James would f force his children to work on the family farm, refusing to let the children go to school resulting in Nanny's poor academic performance. At age seven, while the family was taking a train to visit relatives in southern Alabama, Nanny hit her head on a metal bar on the seat in front of her when the train suddenly stopped. Four years after, she suffered severe headaches. I'm sorry, four years after, she suffered severe headaches, blackouts, and depression. Doss blamed these and her mental instability on that accident. Nanny was first married at age 16 to Charlie Braggs, her co-worker at the linen factory. With her father's approval, they married after four months of dating. Braggs was the only son of a single mother who insisted on continuing to live with him even after he married. That's a little much, in my opinion, but whatever. Back then, that was kind of like a thing, I guess. Um... Nanny later wrote, I married as my father wished he, in 1921 to a boy I only knew but knowed about four or five months, who had no family, only a mother who was unwed, and who had taken over my life completely when we married. She'd never seen anything wrong with what she had done, but she would take spells. She would not let my own mother stay all night. Braggs' mother took up a lot of his attention and limited Nanny's activities. The marriage produced four daughters from 1923 to 1927. The stressed out Nanny started drinking, and her casual smoking habit became a heavy addiction. Both unhappy partners correctly suspected each other of infidelity, and Braggs often disappeared for days on end. Sounds like my ex-husband. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's horrible to say, but it's very true. Like, my ex-husband was the same way, so I... But, I mean, you know... What are you going to do? We, neither one of us liked each other, so. In 1927, the couple lost their two middle girls to suspected food poisoning. It wasn't food poisoning. Soon after, Braggs took firstborn daughter Maldina and fled, leaving newborn Florine behind. Braggs' mother died not much later, and Nanny took a job in a cotton mill to support Maldina and herself. Braggs... <laughs> Braggs brought... <laughs> A lot of words in that little sentence. Okay. Braggs brought Melvina back to the summer, back in the summer of 1928, accompanied by um, a divorcee with her own child. Braggs and Nanny is soon divorced, with Nanny taking her two girls back to her mother's home. Braggs always maintained he left her because he was frightened of her. I mean, that's fair. I mean, she was actually, like, murdering people. So that is a fair assumption, in my opinion. Like, 
Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sure he didn't have any, like, solid evidence, obviously, that she was killing people. But she probably gave off a vibe of being, like, serial killer-y, if that makes sense. I don't know. From what I feel, like, when I research these, I always feel like there's something, some vibe they give off that's, like, this person is not all there and you should not be here. <laughs> you know? But that's just me. Okay. Uh, her second husband was Robert Franklin Harrelson. Or Harrelson. They met and married in 1929. They lived in Jacksonville with Melvina and Florine. After a few months, she discovered that he was an alcoholic and had a criminal record for assault. Despite this, the marriage lasted 16 years. I could not stay married to somebody who was abusive for 16 years. I'm sorry, I couldn't do it, and I'm not in any way victim-blaming anyone here. I just couldn't personally see myself doing it. Because I married an abusive man, and I left shortly after finding out that he was an abusive prick. Um, Melvina gave birth to Robert Lee Haynes in 1943. Another baby followed two years later, but died soon afterward. Um, exhausted from ha labor and groggy from either, Melvina thought she saw her visiting mother stick a hat pin into the baby's head. When she asked her husband and sister for clarification, they said Nanny had told them the baby was dead and they noticed she was holding a pin. The doctors, however, could not give a positive explanation. I'm not really sure, like, if they're, like, saying that the hat pin could have killed the baby or what but that was the impression I was getting from my research. Uh, not really sure how that would work. Um, but yeah. It's just weird. Um, the grieving parents drifted apart and Melvina started dating a soldier. Nanny disapproved of him. And while me, Melvina was visiting her father after a particularly nasty fight with her mother, her son Robert died mysteriously under Nanny's care on July 7, 1945. The death was diagnosed as asphyxia from unknown causes. Probably not all that unknown. Anymore, anyway. Um... And two months later, Nanny collected the $500 life insurance she had taken out on Robert. In 1945, Harrelson raped Nanny. The next day, she put rat poison in Harrelson's corn whiskey jar. And he died that evening. Honestly, that one, I'm just like, well, I mean, he kind of had it coming. <laughs> Not that I support violence. Never use violence as a means to an end. But I am a strong believer that rapists, pedophiles, child molesters whatever the case may be should just be put out to pasture for lack of a better term but I am not the legal justice system and the justice system sees differently and honestly thinks that these people can be rehabilitated so you know what let the justice system I guess do what they do best and fuck it up I am not a big supporter of the legal system I think that in more cases than not they don't make the right decisions um I never hide that though. That is my personal opinion. Don't come for me. It's just my opinion. Um, Nanny met her third husband, Arlie Lanning, through another Lonely Hearts column while traveling in Lexington, North Carolina, and married him three days later. Like Harrelson, Lanning was an alcoholic womanizer. However, in this marriage... It was Nanny who often disappeared, and for months on end. But when she was home, she played the doting housewife, and when he died of what it was said to be heart failure, the townspeople supported her at his funeral. It wasn't heart failure. It, it's just assume from this point forward that whatever these people died of was not natural causes. 
Soon after the couple's house, which had been left to Lanning's sister, burned down. The insurance money went to Nanny, who quickly banked it. And after Lanning's mother died in her sleep, Nanny left North Carolina and ended up at her sister Dovey's home. Dovey was bedridden, and soon after, Nanny's arrival was dead. Like, we don't even care about our own family at this point, apparently. Shit. <laughs> There's so much going on in Nanny's life. Okay. Uh, oops. Looking for yet another husband, Nanny joined a dating service called the Diamond Circle Club and soon met Richard L. Morton of Jamestown, North Carolina. They married in 1952 in Emporia, Kansas. He did not have a drinking problem, but was adulterous. Before she poisoned him, she poisoned her mother, Louisa, in January 1953 when she came to live with them. Morton died three months later on May 19, 1953. It's crazy. Crazy. I I don't know. I can't imagine hating your own parent that much, but I mean, you do what you gotta do, I guess. Okay, we'll be right back short. I am gonna pause out and go ahead and do the rest of the stuff that requires my glasses to be off, and then I will come back because um. It's, it's hard for me to read and not be able to see, if that makes sense. So, give me just a second, and I'll be right back, guys. I poked myself in the eye with mascara once. Just give me a minute. My eye is watering. So, I think I'm good now. Okay. Nanny married Samuel Dulce of Tulsa, Oklahoma in June 1953. Dulce, uh, hold on. Doss was a Nazarene minister who had lost his family to a tornado in Carroll County, Arkansas. Samuel disapproved of the romance novels and stories that his wife adored. In September, I can't have to get this open. Samuel was admitted to the hospital with flu-like symptoms. The hospital diagnosed a severe digestive tract infection. He was treated and released on October 5th. Samuel died on October 12th of 1954. Nanny killed him that evening in her, um, rush to collect the two life insurance policies she had taken out on him. The sudden death alerted his doctor, who ordered an autopsy. The autopsy revealed a huge amount of arsenic in his system, and Nanny was promptly arrested. Should have seen that coming, Nanny. Just saying. Doss confessed to killing four of her husbands, her mother, her sister, her grandson, and her mother-in-law. The state of Oklahoma centered its case only on Samuel Doss. Nanny Doss was prosecuted by J. Howard Edmondson, who later became the governor of Oklahoma. She pleaded guilty on May 17, 1955, and was sentenced to life imprisonment. The state did not pursue the death penalty due to her being be due to her being female. I don't understand that. I mean, like if you killed eleven people and you have the death penalty, it should be based on the like severity of your crimes, in my opinion, not your gender. But whatever. You do you, Oklahoma. <laughs> Doss was never charged with the other deaths. She died from leukemia in the hospital ward of the Oklahoma State Penitentiary in 1965. So, essentially, she murdered 11 people, but was only charged and convicted of one. She wasn't given the death penalty due to her gender, which I think is despicable, but what the fuck do I know? And, um, so, I mean, basically, she got away with ten murders. No matter what way you slice it, she got away with ten murders. That's, that's just how it is. Um, and I think that's, that's 
trouble. Like, nobody even cared. They just wanted to kill 10 other people. They were just like, yeah, you did it, but you're female, so we're not going to prosecute you. <laughs> Have a good life. Bye. Which just goes to show a lot of the inequities in the justice system. You know, women want to be treated equal to men until it comes to the crime that they've done or something else like that. And then they're like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm female. You shouldn't put me to death. I'm a woman. You murdered 11 people. Nobody cares. <laughs> like, you're not, you're not actively influencing life here. Um, but, yeah. That was today's segment. It was on, again, Nanny Doffs, a.k.a. the Giggling Granny. Um, if you want to end your viewing here, you are more than welcome. However, I am going to go ahead and do my hair because we are going out today. So, I will pause out while this is up. And this is your chance to exit now if you would like. But uh, if you plan on staying, great. We'll be back in just a few to finish my or finish hair. Bye. Okay, you stayed. We're now doing my hair. I hate when this happens, and I don't know why it happens, but it does. Sorry, we never go with the piece that's like directly in front because it doesn't sit right once you've braided it. <laughs> so I never used that piece. But I didn't see that that's what I had. So. If I sneeze, I apologize, but my hair is tickling my nose. So.
Oh, I hate doing hair. It is so hard for me to decide like what I want. That looks good. That'll do. That'll do. Okay. Uh, you can see also that I've got almost all my jewelry on. I just want to add hoops or dangles. I just didn't want to do that until I had my hair done because I didn't want to accidentally touch them, you know. That not go cool here. So this is today's look. Um, today's segment again was on Nanny Doss, the giggling granny. The makeup look was Disney's Freaky Friday. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry about all the struggles with glasses and stuff. I'll be back in contact before we know it. Um, hopefully anyway, and I will see you all tomorrow. Tomorrow's look will be for Disney's Frozen. Be sure to be here for that. I hope you all have a wonderful day. As always, do what is right for you. Be cautiously kind to others and don't do anything I wouldn't do. Bye, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.